I wanted to give just a, a quick tip uh, for the day um, about managing anxiety. Now, the thing is, is, we live in what's called a culture of fear. So basically, um, our our culture, you know, the American uh, uh, nation is in a place of constant anxiety and constant fear. Uh, we teach it to ourselves, we hold to it, we teach it to our kids. It's everywhere that you look, you know. It, it doesn't matter what realm of knowledge you're looking at. You know, if you look at science, there's this hurricane out in space. It's, you know, uh, heading towards Earth and all this stuff. And, and so people are, ah, you know, should we be afraid of this? Um, then you obviously have the fixation of death, which is a natural human occurrence anyways. I mean, everybody's afraid of death. But then it's like... Our culture gives it even more uh, control and power and focus than it naturally should have. And I think that part of that might be due to technology, and that's a whole different discussion. But, you know, then there's politics, and everybody's afraid of if this person's elected or if this person's elected, uh, you know, outbreaks. I mean, it's thing after thing after thing. You know, is Y2K, it's, everything's going to crash, or, you know, uh, the the flu, the, the, the swine flu. You know, all these different things, the... Uh, the um, E. coli outbreak, um, the one where they were prohibiting travel in Africa and stuff. Um, ah, I forget which one. Ah. Well, that should tell you that I can't even remember which one, you know, because there's that many. Um, and then the, you know, everybody's freaking out about global warming, about the frogs dying, and all this different stuff. And, you know, we live in a culture of fear. Everybody uh, responds to everything in fear. Everybody responds to it. It's, it's like fear is a drug, you know, uh, and, and we kind of have gotten to incorporate it into our lives. Now, if you struggle from anxiety, general anxiety, or any, any kind of anxiety, you already have anxiety all by yourself. You don't need any help. But if you do stuff like read the newspaper, you know, watch the news, you know, it, it's it's everywhere. You'll just be watching a show that you like. Maybe it's not, maybe it's a fiction. You know, it's just a, a, a an entertainment piece, and you're watching and you're having fun, and then something will happen and you just be overcome with fear, or you wake up in the middle of the night and you just be overcome with fear. We live in a culture of fear, and that only feeds our anxiety. Um, and here here's the here's the here's the thing I want you to understand from all this. There's always going to be something to fear, even if we didn't live in a culture of fear. There would always be something to fear, but the thing is, is we're taught to respond to things in fear. The whole thing with um, with North Korea, you know, how, how's everybody, oh, we need to be scared of this. We need to be scared of what President Trump is going to do or isn't going to do. Um, the same thing as with Republicans did with President Obama. You know, we need to be afraid, trying to teach people to fear. You know, instead of thinking, instead of being active, instead of focusing your thoughts, let's respond to everything with fear. And that's really what I what I want to want to say is there's always something to fear out there. If you look for it, you're always going to find something to fear. You have to make a conscious decision, a conscious decision to control your thoughts. You have to make that constant decision, that 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 choice. That I'm not going to be afraid of these things, and if my mind starts to wonder, I'm going to think about something else. Okay. Well, you can't just stick your head in the sand. Well, I understand that. I, I get that. All right. I understand. There's some scary things going on. There always will be scary things going on. There always have been scary things going on. But you don't have to focus on it. You don't have to give your power to it. You don't have to be overcome with it. Okay. So with that, there's a little, a little trick is you, you have to separate your feelings from your thoughts. If you wake up in the middle of the night, for instance, you're going to end with, with anxiety and, oh, you're just having a panic attack. Oh, you're freaking out. And, and you might you might think that you're having a panic attack because of something that you're thinking. But the truth is your thoughts exist, especially with anxiety attack and panic attacks, your thoughts exist separate from your feelings. You know, for instance, you might be overcome with anxiety just sitting there doing nothing. And so then you'll start thinking about something that only makes it worse. Oh, I, I'm going to die. I, I'm losing my breath. But you, what you have to do is you have to say, okay, this is how I'm feeling. There's nothing I can do about that. But I'm not going to think about I think about that. I'm going to think about this. I have a certain time of day that I, if I wake up, I'm going to have – if I wake up at this time, I'm going to have a panic attack. It's usually around like 4 in the morning. If I wake up at that time, I'm going to have a panic attack. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes I wake up with a panic attack. Sometimes I wake up and then have a panic attack. It happens all, all, all different ways, okay? But I usually think in that time about um, death or sickness or something like that. Okay, well, here's the thing. So what I have to do is I'll put on a show and I'll watch a show. Get my mind on something else. 
or I'll start thinking about something else. Um, pray, read your Bible, that kind of stuff. Get your mind on something else. And yes, that feeling might still be there, but you're going to be you you're going to be actively changing how you think, and that's going to help you to control your 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 feelings and your thoughts. And the more you control it, the more you'll be in control of it. Now, I'm not going to say that there are, there will ever be a time when you no longer have anxiety or panic attacks or anything like that. But I am going to say that they won't be as bad, and you won't be just a helpless victim in all of it. In fact, well, that's a discussion for the whole other day. But the point being um, that you have to face it. You have to change your thoughts because our culture constantly tells us to, to be afraid, but we have to choose not to be afraid because there's always going to be something to fear no matter what arena of life, spiritual things, scientific things, I mean, life in general, family problems, uh, you know, sickness, it's, it's all around us. It's, some, it's something to be afraid of. Don't give in to that culture of fear. Don't let it train you like that. Retrain yourself and start thinking about stuff and critically analyzing stuff so that you can change the way you're thinking. When I wake up at four now and with a panic attack, I focus my, 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 my thoughts on something else. If I start feeling myself having a panic attack, I just focus on my breathing, get my heart back under control. And yes, I still have those feelings, but now my heart's under control. Okay, now let's think about something else. Okay, well, you know, just to watch. Sometimes I'll just sit and watch something like this, like, like the tree out my window or something. Focus on getting control of it. You don't have to be. You don't have to give in to the fear. You might not be able to do anything to to stop your your panic attacks or your anxiety. That might always be a problem. I get that, but you don't have to be a victim of it the whole time. So, um.